Hi guys, Zator here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this sound, which is my EQ Bass 7, and, and it's for an upcoming track, so I hope you guys enjoy it. It might be a little bit loud, so headphone users beware. So it's this sound right here, I'll solo it, pull it up in the, in the, in my mixer here. There is actually quite a lot going on here, and I'll bring in the sub as well so you can hear that. Because it actually makes a very big difference uh, when it comes to the comes to the sound. Uh, so this is a couple layers, actually. I don't actually think I needed that channel. So it's part one and part two, and that's uh, two layers that I have here. And on their own, they're kind of bad, but when you mix them in add effects and things, it, it becomes really interesting. Um, okay, so part one and part two, uh, I forgot, I just routed uh, channel 12 into channel 13. Uh, I needed more effects, so that's why I needed both of them. Uh, they're both sent to the same mixer input, uh, so that way I can apply the effects to both of them at the same time. So I'll mute the drums, I'll mute everything in the background except for some automation clips. Uh, all right. So the first part is... Uh, just an EQ bass layer one. It's a very standard e or vocal formant bass. Uh, Seamless R made a video a while back on how to make this. It's a sine wave uh, tuned to bass level with a triangle wave with harmonics uh, modulating it, uh, FMing it here. Um, you can add extra harmonics in the high end if you want. I don't think it really needed it. So I just left them off, and it gives you, well here, I'll undo the effects here. And then the triangle is being modulated by just a sine wave with some extra harmonics. Very, very lightly, did not need a lot there. Um, and that's being modulated by, well, another sine wave. And then a, a kind of a weird shape, it's a quarter quarter wave or no it's a half half sine wave with its phase adjusted and its tension also adjusted so it gives it a, a little bit of a different shape it really doesn't make that big of a difference but i found found that it helped out a little bit and that is also detuned very slightly to add a slight racing effect but it's not super noticeable when you apply all the effects um, and it also has modulation With a little bit of work, that could be a good bass all on its own, but for the most part, works here pretty well. Uh, part two, which I have them labeled backwards, no big deal, is a high frequency bass. Sorry if that's a little ear piercing, but it's just some FMing and some RMing with a very weird shape, which is a it's a sine wave with the second half uh, flipped, so it's rectified. Um, and then I added some extra harmonics to it, just to give it that high frequency buzz. Um, some FM from operator 2 and operator 3. And some modulation. I don't think I'm using uh, modulator Y here at all. Um, so both of those sounds independent are kind of kind of bad sounding, especially when you leave out the bass. It could work, but you'd still want to add a lot of effects to it. But luckily for you guys, I am applying all of the effects to it. I have, I don't even know how many effects. What is that? 15 or so? Whatever, a lot of effects. Uh, first one, let's actually turn off the second bank of effects for now and turn off all the effects so you can hear exactly what is happening. So the first one it's going into is a wave shaper to compress it. Well, it's actually doing a couple things. First, it's distorting it. Second, it's compressing it. And third, it's adding high frequency content. Mostly in that order. Um, it's distorting it, which does add the high frequency harmonics and give it that crunchy sound. Uh, but that wasn't super necessary considering the how high some of the frequencies in the basses already were. 
but it does make it a lot louder and does compress it. The compression wasn't super necessary, but you can see it in the uh, in the waveform on the mixer. On the level meter, sorry. Next, it goes into an EQ that is not acting as an EQ at all. It's just acting as a crazy filter. Um, we're getting a lot of movement. I'll turn that on. So the filter is going crazy. It's a bandpass with two notches in it. Um, the bandpass is right here. And it, it's automated a little bit more crazily than the band passes. Those are these two here. So you can see they're moving around here. And then when you layer them all three, you get some pretty crazy movement. In general, you want the notches to not interact with each other so much, but have them... You do want to have them move through each other to some extent, but not have a lot of it, because when you notch the same spot twice, you're really effectively just destroying any frequencies that were there. So they move, and they kind of move counter to each other, and that's kind of what I went for in the automation. I'll bring back in the bass here. That goes into yet another wave shaper, which is doing even less than the first one, but still... Hitting it with the compression is important. And it also serves to bring back bring back frequencies that were lost when we uh, filtered it so heavily. Uh, because distortion adds back harmonics, it's very useful for that. Um, and then we're compressing it like crazy. Just to help bring back even more of those frequencies and level it out because the filtering is so aggressive. Um, and we're actually doing the same thing twice. That's another layer of EQ. Turn on the automation for that. Just adding another layer of the same thing. I thought it fit. It's the only reason I did it. Then that goes through more distortion. This one's more aggressive. And more compression. Mostly the same kind of aggressive. This one's not nearly as aggressive, but it's still there. Uh, the release times are turned way down. Uh, that really makes a huge difference when it comes to compressors, and especially Maximus. That goes into just an EQ to help round out the sound and remove a little bit of that crazy low end because when you're filtering something that excessively, you are actually changing its pitch to some extent. And when you change its pitch, especially in really low frequencies, you can have frequencies that go beyond the sub-level. You can have them go into the, into the inaudible range. And that's not really helpful. Um, it would come through a subwoofer and sound really weird, which could be cool, I guess. But since we already have sub, uh, it would phase against it and do some really gnarly stuff. If you want to experiment with, experiment with that, let me know. I'd love to hear it. But anyways, and then in the final, the final effect in this chain is just another compressor, which acts as just kind of, kind of a mixing compressor before it goes into the next effects bank. Uh, wasn't super necessary considering the sound is already crunched, but if you notice that the low end here is all over the place, the compressor really helps to level that out and have and make sure that the low end isn't popping through at random or seemingly random points. Um, and the release time is turned down on that. Um, it's alright to destroy the low end in this case. Normally I wouldn't have a release time that low on like a master or mix or mixer really. But in this case it worked out okay. So we're gonna move into the next effects bank. Starts out with a Maximus that I'm not really doing anything with. Uh, this I think I vote yes, I automate the volume with this one. That's why it doesn't have anything set up. You can see the pre here is automating the whole thing and it goes from zero to fifty percent. So we're since 50% is technically 100% in Maximus, or in this pre-knob, uh, this pre -knob, uh, and then anything beyond that is a boost up to 200%, I just limited it to 50%. And that adds transients back to a sound that we completely crushed. Uh, without it, it sounds okay, but I really liked it when I added the volume automation. And that helps, especially when you add in side chaining, um, throwing everything to a side chain bus. 
because we're side chaining so aggressively and then adding volume automation back adds for kind of a rhythmic sound, which worked out. Uh, from there, it's a lot of like mixing, a lot of mixing steps to help it fit in with the track and get some warmth back into it. I'll uh, mute all these so we can hear them individually. And there you can hear the the EQ automation coming or the volume automation coming through quite strongly. Uh, this is a Baxter EQ. It's a uh, it's an emulation of an older style EQ. I'm not sure which one, uh, but basically you have a it's a two channel EQ that can be set to left, right, or mid side. So in this case, I'm using the mid side mode, um, R, which is the RS mode here. Or it's the side in the RS, so it'd be left, right, or mid side, and I have mid side turned on. I'm cutting everything below 30 hertz on the mids and everything below 54 hertz on the sides. Um, boosting at 84, or well, shelving at 84 and 74 hertz respectively, and not touching the low frequencies too, or well, at any, any, any at all. And then in the mids, I am a little bit. Um, and then the highs are boosted in both at 4.8 kilohertz and 1.6 kilohertz respectively. I'm cutting everything below or above 16 kilohertz in the mids and everything above 11 kilohertz in the sides. And then not touching the outputs. So we'll turn that on. It's a subtle effect. The cut is not a very steep slope. Um, so this EQ serves more to add a little bit of what I would say mid or low mid kind of in that warmth section, but it's really light. So it adds more of a warmth characteristic. Hopefully that's not too much of a buzzword. Um, then it goes into another mastering EQ, or mixing EQ. Where I'm accentuating the 200 to 500 Hertz range. That's kind of the mid range. Uh, that goes into a uh, compressor, which is an emulation of an LA-2A, I believe. And I'm hitting it quite hard with that. You can see we're hitting 7 to 10 dB at some points. Um, and then I'm adding some saturation with that. I like the way the saturation sounds on this compressor, and I thought it would fit. Really not noticeable, but the compression is, and it makes it a little bit quieter. And since this uh, this this specific compressor has a longer release time, I find it evens out that volume automation from earlier, but not too much. So it leaves it through just enough. Uh, that goes into a delay, which is actually for stereo. This sound doesn't have any stereo up until this point. Um, I could have turned on unison in Citrus. Didn't feel like it. Uh, so. What that's doing is it's a it's an offset, a left-right offset. So the left channel and the right channel are offset from each other very slightly. In fact, it's 2.5 milliseconds. Um, and then the delay time is turned way down. It's turned down to 0.04-ish. Yeah, 0.04 seconds. So that's 4 milliseconds. And then the volume turned down just a little bit. So if I turn the volume all the way up, you can hear perfectly clear what it's doing. And that serves to add some stereo into it, which makes it stand out and it makes much, much better. Uh, that goes into another Maximus. Where we are compressing the mids just a little bit more. And the master. And you can see the volume automations coming through there. And the um, they're being ironed out even a little bit more. Um, it's just to taste, really. Um, this I had recorded and dumped into another base. Let me close all the windows here. Uh, which base was it? It was my resample base. Um, so 
So that is the same bass resampled elsewhere in the track. Um, you can see the actual volume automations there that we added. That corresponds directly to the automation here. So I had recorded it and dumped it into Harmer to use elsewhere, which means I can use the same bass twice, but change it just enough to make it unique, which is pretty nice. And you can hear that I, t I played it, or recorded it, should I say, at middle C. Uh, this means I can resample it easier and actually play accurate notes on a keyboard um, without having to uh, tell Harmer that it's a different note, that it should resample at a different pitch. So that worked out pretty well. Um, and then that goes into one final EQ for the final track. Um, this is not finalized yet, since this track is still in a, still a work in progress. Um, right now, it's adding a little bit much high end, I find, so I'll probably ease back on that. Save that. And that is the finished sound. It's a lot of automation, and just a lot of effects, really, um, that come together in a pretty interesting way. There's a number of different things that you could have done with this differently. Uh, changing the original sounds makes a huge difference on the output since we're doing all sorts of crazy things to it. Just a little change here makes a big difference. Uh, so definitely, if you try to recreate this bass, uh, use some different sounds there. Resample some stuff. Uh, use even percussion. That can sound really weird and kind of interesting. So... Yeah, give it, give it a try for yourself and see what you think. Um, when it's uh, hit with everything else, we'll add back in the, the kick and some automation. And I'll give you guys a, for those of you who watch the video through, I will give you a nice little preview of the track. Oops, I forgot to unmute everything, and my computer is, of course, underrunning a little bit. There you go. This track will be really soon. I still got a little bit of work to do, but for the most part, the drop is finished. So, hope you guys enjoyed. My name is Zator. I'll see you in the next one.